Okay. She All right. Said, so oh, we're gonna I, do it looked like it was on mute. So can everybody hear the interpreter now? Yes. Yes. Yep. You're good. Okay. Great. So hello everyone. I wanted the sign for the week is the sign. Before I actually show you the sign, it's important that you be mindful of the facial expressions because facial expressions are an intricate part of our language. It's not just on the hands. And so today um, you don't sign don't that typically if you shake your head, that means no. And so I don't understand would be shaking your head as in not understand. So the shaking of your head means it's an, it negates the sign to understand. And this is how you uh, form it from a fist to an index finger. So I wanna see everybody sign it. Hands up everybody. And then shake your head, don't understand, correct. So now if you do understand, you would nod your head. Yes, I understand you, but I do not understand you is shaking your head. So using your head in those movements are very important to show whether you understand somebody or don't understand. And it's an important aspect of our language as we have a lot of body language and facial expressions that are intricate parts of our language that all hold meaning. So I hope you understand. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rima. That was awesome. All right, so we introduced Rima Cornish, our uh, deaf and hard of hearing specialist uh, for the rest of our community services department. So we have Gary on this morning. We have our lead, Jason. Good morning. We have Isabella. Good morning, Isabella. And let's see, we've got Michelle, our manager, who I made a co-host because I'm using a hotspot in a conference room down in Valley Mountain, and I'm not sure how good Let's see, uh, our other manager, good morning, Helen, is uh, on here this morning, too, and I see our HCBS specialist, Alicia's on here, and Carly, and Damien, and uh, Scott for Community Services, and Shirley, and my assistant, Zach, is on as well. I see Maurice and uh, Adriana here from Community Services, uh, too, so, oh, and Kate and Leah, wow, we have the whole team, possibly. Pretty close to it. All right, awesome. And then um, let me see here. Uh, we've got uh, Jolana's on, and uh, good morning. And let's see who else we've got. I see Christy Owasa is here um, from our Specialized Services Sports Unit. We've got our uh, Director of Client Services, Michelle Johnson, here. And we have uh, Camelia Houston, our uh, Director of uh, Intake and Clinical Services. From Client Services Managers, we have, uh, Carol, let's see, we've got Wyatt uh, on this morning. Good morning. Wyatt, and I see Kanisha on and Veronica on. Good morning. And let's see here. We also have Rowena on, and I see Phil Perez and uh, Christina Lane. So we've got all of CPR represented uh, here. That's awesome. And let's see. I also am looking, cruising through the Heidi up in Grass Valley in a good morning. Let's see. I don't think I, if I missed you, wave your hand. Carly, did I get you? Employment specialist. All right, good. All right. So um, to talk about our agenda today, we're going to discuss a little bit about um, the Senate subcommittee three hearing that was yesterday. Talk a little bit about kind of what went on there. Um, we are going to be discussing the DSP collaborative kickoff. Um, we had our event at Alta on Wednesday and I'm down here at, in Stockton uh, for it today and kind of talk about grassroots day that's coming up for um, Alta as well. And then any other topics, we did have our board meeting this week and we had our POS disparity meeting. So we'll just probably go over a little bit of that stuff as well today. So if there is any other topics, um, obviously you guys can jump in the chat and put information in there, or you can say thank you Rima, which thank you guys very much for putting those notes in there um, for Rima. So um, so we'll get started here. Uh, uh, I had an opportunity yesterday, um, surprise, to testify at the Senate subcommittee um, for Health and Human Services. And this was related to uh, DDS's safety net plan. 
Um, every year, the department goes in front of uh, you know the Senate and the Assembly, and they talk about their proposals and the things that they are looking at doing. And so, um, I was asked to come in um, by the legislative uh, aides to talk about the enhanced SLS uh, services that we offer through our regional center, and just kind of in general talking about the safety net plan and. Um, kind of, you know, from the regional center perspective. So I want to go over the information a little bit with you, if you guys uh, will bear with me, because I think it is interesting to see, um, whoops, sorry. Let's say it's interesting to see what uh, it looks like. So let me start off with that. And I'm gonna try to share my screen here without an extra monitor. So that'll be fun. All right. All right, Gary, are you seeing the partner services at the top right there? Sharing my screen appropriately, give me a thumbs up. All right, I see a nodding head, very good. The Department of Development Services, what I am sharing here is the um, agenda for the hearing, which uh, I am the link to it in the chat right now in case you want to look at this information. One of the things that I think is very neat about um, years ago, these years, uh, down at the Capitol, uh, there was a time when the developmental centers were closing and I would uh, attend those frequently. Uh, connections unstable. So um, one thing again is I, I would say that is good about this is that uh, we are able to see updated information from the department um, about the demographics of the clients that we all serve and also kind of what the coming uh, uh, trends are when it comes to things. One piece of information uh, that was just about the discussion was the increase in um, the uh, population of individuals with autism and the challenges that the department has been facing in serving those individuals as they've grown up and uh, some of the reasons why they are looking at doing uh, some of their safety net services is because of um, needing to serve uh, children that have uh, autism that again have really um, extensive support needs. And I know that um, Michelle was there, Michelle Ramirez was there for the hearing and I know at the board meeting we talked about it last night, but I believe that in the next couple of years and it's going to be this diagnosis of, um, for regional center clients and because of the trends that we're doing. So again, just it speaks to making sure that we are um, developing the appropriate types of services for um, all of our clients in this you know, increased group of individuals with autism. All right. So um, as I'm scrolling through here, you can see there's kind of some demographic uh, information that's provided by the department, and then it goes into the panel that we had. So our panel consisted of the director, and I'll say it did not recording. Um, it was, uh, there was, I guess, a decision made not to record it. So all the other ones that were recorded, but this one wasn't. And the director of uh, developmental services, myself, uh, Toby, uh, Bazan, who is a self-advocate who formerly lived at Fairview Developmental Center and give a very uh, strong uh, uh, testimony related to his experiences and why he feels like more community-based options should be uh, developed instead of more institutional uh, type of uh, uh, Okay, sorry about that. I was muted. So it looks like we might have lost John. Um, we will see if he's able to call back. <laughs> um, Michelle, are you able, I know that he said that you were there while we're waiting for John to come back. Are you able to share a summary or anything that you um, observed when you were there? Yeah. Um, Thank you. So, 
John Decker gave a really great um, example of um, the types of services and how the regional centers have supported people living independently in, in the community. He talked a little bit about moving people out of the DCs and the types of services that they're in today. Jackie uh, from STEP gave a really great um, as, as, you know, just shared a couple stories of clients that she supports and how many people she's moved into the community and the ways that, um, you know, the types of services that um, clients receive from SLS to ILS to job supports. So, um, so yeah, it was it was really. And then there was a, another individual from, I want to say down south, um, who also presented he was a, a a gentleman who had been locked in a in a, a facility for about 10 years and came out um, and was able to live with family and was sharing the stories of how his life has changed and how he's working and volunteering and um, living a, a, a pretty independent life so I think that all of the stories together really painted a wonderful picture of um just the uh, the opportunities that our clients can have with the types of services that we provide in the community. So John did a great job uh, presenting yesterday. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Um, that was uh, a good summary there of the activities. In essence, you know, the argument from many folks is, you know, we need to be looking at community-based uh, services, not building more. In essence. You know, ICFs is what the developmental centers were before. Um, you know that that and building it on the developmental center grounds is something that is just so, the advocates are very concerned about. Uh, you know, are we going to be developing little um, little developmental centers all over the place? Um, I know that these are more home-like environments than the old developmental center units. Um, they're also short-term placements. You know, when you go into these types of uh, star homes. But regardless of that, um, definitely a lot of concerns from advocates about this. And so I had a good opportunity to, uh, as uh, Michelle said, let Jackie uh, show off all the successes that she had. We had a client that came over to the hearing that um, I know the folks in the SSSU unit are familiar with. And she's an individual that had been in jail at, in, in the STAR program, the first STAR program actually that opened up and um, is now living out independently on her own in supported living and she was there and I got to see her for the first time in about four years, uh, five years, um, when last time I think she was in the developmental center the last time I saw her. So it, it, was, uh, it was powerful to have client testimony certainly there um, for, the, um, for the hearing. So that was the senate uh, sub three hearing and uh, again it was uh, a good experience and uh, certainly appreciated i got some assistance from the folks at arca in my testimony so that uh, is always nice as well all right i want to jump over to our dsp collaborative this is going to be fun we're going to see how well i'm going to be able to do this from uh, this shoddy uh, internet here but i'm going to try to show you guys a quick uh, one minute video of the DSP collaborative. And I think I've got the captions on as well. And just give me one moment here. I'm gonna queue it up and we're gonna use the lowest quality that we can because I don't know how much uh, I'm gonna be able to do here as far as uh, sharing it. Oh, are you gonna work for me? I don't know if you are. All right, I'm not going to be able to do that, I don't think, because I don't think I have a strong enough internet connection down here. So instead, I'm going to go to the chat, and I'm going to drop the, here we go, drop the YouTube link right in there. And so if you are interested, that is our DSP Collaborative uh, video. We did have our kickoff event that occurred on uh, Wednesday. It was, uh, I think, pretty well attended. Again, I'm down here at Stockton today to uh, kind of represent for Alta down here and talk about the things that we did. I am going to share my screen because the DSP Collaborative website is up and uh, it is what we are going to be encouraging folks to participate in for this, um, for this uh, initiative. All right, so are we seeing the DSP Collaborative website? Yes, no? 
maybe so? Yes. I think I'm, all right, perfect, thank you. Um, so on here, you can see uh, they have the video we have done, um, which I was going to you right now. It has a list of our counties. Um, sorry, Alpine County, you guys got left off. If there's anyone from Alpine County that's on right now, I'm probably doubtful, but um, we did leave that one off, and so we will make sure that that gets on here as well. But in essence, this is a site uh, that is, is set up only for regional center service providers. And this allows you to um, post your jobs on here. It is live now. So I'll give you an example of something that, uh, let's see. So if I want to look for a job in Stanislaus County, I can go click down here and I can see UCP of Stanislaus County. And it's got information about them. And it has all of their social medias and it has sort of how to contact them. And then you have a, a form there where you could submit your information directly to um, UCP of Stanislaus County. Uh, Adjoin also looks like they did theirs as well. Um, yeah, so they talk about their um, program and they have their information and you have the opportunity to do it too. So in essence, what we've created is this job board here that is really specific just for our industry and just for our service providers. So um, again, uh, what we wanna encourage folks to do is if you are a provider, click that little subscribe down there and you will be able to put your information in for the counties that you serve. If you are looking to, um, and then we've got some information in here, we're kind of still working on updating a little bit of it, but kind of talks about the DSP collaborative why we decided to do it. Uh, we talked about uh, for job seekers, we have information. We're gonna be putting some testimonials in here of folks that are working in the field as DSPs in different types of settings. Uh, we're gonna be hosting our uh, flyers here that we're doing for our career expo. And I did talk to Charlotte in HR and uh, Herman, I think yesterday about getting out the uh, Disability Industry Career Expo flyers to everyone today. So hopefully um, they're there. Again, just a little about us section uh, that they have here too. So right now, just really want to encourage you all as service providers to get on there at the DSP Collaborative website, dspcollaborative.org, put in your information about your companies. Um, I do want to thank, you know, we had uh, Michelle Ramirez, Eric Champa, we had uh... I think we may have lost John again. Hopefully he'll call in. So while we're waiting for John, um, I had an announcement that I'll share and then he might come back on because um, this wasn't part of the agenda. Um, but moving forward, we have completed our new vendor orientation model. Um, and we just want to let everyone know that. So our 16 hour vendor orientation has now been condensed down to four hours. Um, it's about four and a half hours and it's through our learning management system. So it's modules that will be uh, that you guys will be reviewing or going through for our vendor orientation. Um, and those we will, you know, as we're going through the process, the specialists will sign you up for those, um, give you the registration, and then you guys will self-enroll um, and attend those. And we're also looking at additional classes or, um, you know, informational instructional videos that you guys can access once your vendors as well. So um, that will be rolling out April 3rd. And um, I don't know if anyone has any questions on that. Um, can everyone hear me? I got a message that somebody was not able I to hear, hear you, me. Michelle. I, oh, I can hear you. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I got a message down there. Um, and then I will, since John hasn't come back on yet, I was hoping to turn over to Alicia, um, our HCBS specialist. 
and see if we have any updates on our HCBS grant. I'm not sure, but I wanted to just check with you. Alicia, are you available? Yep. Um, I'm here. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So we submitted uh, our proposals to DDS for approval on March 1st. Um, on March 15th, they replied that they got them, um, but we still have not heard back. So when and if y'all are uh, approved for a grant, you will uh, hear from us. Um, but in the meantime, we're waiting on DDS. We got, I think, $3 million in proposals and only two or 980 some thousand dollars for grants. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, another update, I know that John talked last time at Copy of the Community Services about our vendor forums um, and kind of asking if we wanted to have those listed on our website. Um, so we are working with Herman to get those on our website so you guys can access those through our um, event calendar um, and get those links as well. And I don't have anything else. Helen, do you have any updates on your end with your unit that you wanted to share while we're waiting for John to get back on? Well, I oh, think man. John is back oh, on. No, he's uh, back on. <laughs> I came back like five minutes ago, but you were doing so well. And <laughs> so I didn't want to interrupt you. No, I, again, I apologize, folks, down here at Valley Mountain Regional Center. And uh, my hotspot is not quite holding up, I think, to sharing screens and things like that. Um, with that being said, uh, I saw um, Jennifer Bloom or, or Michelle Johnson in their offices. I wonder if you guys would not uh, would be willing to just uh, go onto our website real quick and share your screens and just show people the strategic plan again, since we had the opportunity to give updates oh, sure. yesterday to our board about it. Um, if you could Let just, me, yeah. Uh, I can pull that up, John. And I believe you should be able to share your screen. I will make you a co-host. Okay. Oh, and I see, let's see, I see Laura Gorham and I see Cindy Lay and, and Carol. Good morning. Three, of, three more of our managers. All right. So we have our um, met our board of directors uh, meeting last night. It was, it seemed like the board of directors meetings of old because we actually had um, a good turnout of people in person. We had people that came to public comment in person for our board meeting and to take a look at all the strategic plan. And I was just wondering if you could turn to like the employment section. Sure. I don't want to make you all dizzy, so which look is away. I think what number two. It's number two. Yep. Oh, Here I know. It is. So just if we if we could just share just the structure real quick, um, as I have a bad internet connection, I see. Sure. Um, of of how this. I mean, we don't need to go over all of the updates, but just letting folks. Could you would you mind sharing that just real quickly? How it's laid you. out, and then if people want to look at our progress. Um, Absolutely. So in maybe um, a future meeting, we can talk about our progress. I'm going to back up a little bit um, just to share the table of contents. We have four strategic focus areas, client and family support, employment, housing, and community inclusion and engagement. So John asked me to scroll to um, employment. Here we are. So each of the areas starts out with a definition. So what is it that we're trying to achieve? We have a section on the um, input that we've received from the community. So this was part of our early planning in developing the strategic plan. We wanted to know what our stakeholders were asking us for and what would be important to them. So from there, we determined that what we want to achieve is that those who wish to work are employed or preparing for employment in an area that interests them so that we're creating meaningful experiences for uh, clients, not just, oh, well, here's a job. It needs to be a job that brings them, fulfills them, and fulfills their goals. So um, we have all of these metrics here, and then we have 
baseline goals, baseline numbers, and then where do we wanna be by the end of the strategic plan? I can put this link in the chat so that you can all see it. Um, I won't go through all of that, but then we have goals. So for employment, we have three specific goals to meet our overall um, focus area. So the first goal is that we make training about employment resources more accessible to clients and service coordinators. And then we talk about how we're going to do that. So we go through what planned activities are we doing to achieve this goal about making training more accessible uh, to clients and service coordinators. So Carly, our employment specialist, is developing flyers on various topics related to employment. She's doing a version for service coordinators and client services managers, and another version for clients and families. Do you want me to continue, John, or is that, does that capture it? I think that gives a pretty good overview. Again, you know, you put the link to this in the chat. And so if you would like to I will. take a look at that, um, you guys are, are welcome to do so. And you can always reach out to me as service providers and give feedback about these types of things. Um, I still do, you know, I've been working on the newsletter and things like that, but I still do want to encourage folks that, um, if you do have stories and definitely pictures of things about your agency that you want to share, uh, Zach's inbox is just waiting for things to be sent to him. Um, and we love being able to put new content onto our newsletters. We will have a newsletter that comes out in a couple weeks. Um, and Zach has dropped his email into the chat there as well. And uh, again, as you know, we are uh, trying to certainly retain all the employees that we possibly can. You know, if you do any type of employee appreciation events, anything like that, you know, we would just certainly love to see uh, some, something that we could maybe put into our newsletter. Um, Camelia, we are going to have a presentation that we're going to do a Coffee with Community Services possibly in a few weeks or so, maybe like next, end of next month or so. Um, can you give us a little preview of what we're gonna be talking about with Mary and Captain? Yeah, um, hello everybody. Um, Mary, for those who don't know, is our autism um, clinical specialist here, Mary Rettenhouse, and um, she is a board certified uh, assistant behavior analyst, and she participates in Captain. Um, which is an agency, a multi-agency organization that um, focuses on evidence-based practices and uh, the use of them, the strategies with uh, folks with autism, for folks with autism. And so um, she spearheaded a training for um, across the state and many regional centers participate in CAPTAIN and um, for, for training. And we work with um, those within education and different SELPAs um, you said different agencies supporting our population. And so Mary spearheaded a training and uh, targeting three residential providers and um, targeting outcomes. What can we do to support them, increase outcomes, increase quality of life. And the, the nutshell is 92% goals met or exceeded. And we were excited about it. And so we're looking to upscale this. It was like a small sample group uh, to show the effectiveness of using evidence-based practices. And so we want to upscale it to vendors and open it up. And this is why uh, John was mentioning it will be presented. Mary will present about it. She'll talk about it's the care project, specifically what this particular project was um, within Captain. And um, she will talk about it. We want to open it up to people who would uh, be interested in benefiting um, from the additional support. It's not limited to residential by any means. So um, more to come on that, but we're excited um, just because of the outcomes that were already gained. And, and I think if Michelle doesn't mind me bringing it up, Michelle Ramirez talked at the board last night about Mary's um, impending involvement with her organization. Uh, yeah, that, I, I was, I was going to ask her to share that. So that's perfect. Uh, Michelle had reached out via email to me and said, I, I need to get connected with someone um, for some autism training gave her Mary's contact information and Michelle shared all about it last night. Please, Michelle, please share with us. Yeah, so um, 
you know, like many of you on my own, it's been in business for what, 20 some odd years more. And we've um, seen our company grow and change. And what we, what our team was starting to notice was this big influx over the last couple of years of autistic um, clients coming into adult services. And so our team was just, it just started to become more and more of a conversation. We, we have had trainings in the past, but we really decided we wanted to build our capacity. And when I started seeing the data that's coming out through the regional center of what's coming for us um, in terms of how many autistic clients are coming in, we decided we wanted to build our capacity within an organization. So we are pursuing um, all of our team to become autistic uh, autism certified. But we connected with um, with Mary because she's coming out to give our team a big training uh, for about 75 of our direct service individuals that serve in um, ILS specifically. That's where we have the biggest population of autistic um, individuals. And so we're pretty excited about that. And she's gave us so many resources and um, we're just really excited. We're also um, starting our uh, a client um, autism task force because um, we feel that um, it might be a good way for us to just have a touchstone with um, the, our clients on all the things that we do in our services. I mean, they could assess a training that we do. They could participate in a training. They could look at some of our materials. They could help us better understand what um, some of our curriculum or maybe even some of our client packets might need to be changed a little bit. So, I mean, the I really don't know where that's going to go. It's just starting to be newly formed, but I, I imagine it can turn into a lot of exciting things for them as well. But we kind of thought that this would be a great way to have um, them help to guide where we go as an organization as well. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, I, I just, I would encourage you all, we, we have an autism specialist here who's been with our regional center for like, what, 13 years now or so, or 12, 13 years. And so, uh, yeah, probably right around there. And she's just so knowledgeable. And, and so I just really want to encourage, I, I think Jessica Knuth is on here um, from CIWP, and I think working really well and collaboratively with our uh, clinical department. So, um, let's see, Michelle Duchesne, can you share your screen? Can you go to DDS's website and share your screen with them? I can do it from mine, but I'm worried that it'll get me kicked out of the meeting if I try. I want to talk real quickly about kind of something that's going on with our regional center, all, I guess all the regional centers, to community services, and I just want to kind of keep you all in the loop about it, both our staff and then obviously the all the service providers that are on. And it's going to be going to the directives on DDS's website for the regional centers. Hopefully I have not frozen yet. The Michelle seems to have gone away, her camera did for me. So um, the reason why I'm asking us to take a look at DDS's website, and if we're not able to navigate to it, that's fine, is that for the self-determination, the 099 service code, the Department of Developmental Services has put out a directive to regional centers indicating what vendorization documents should be used for, that, for those vendorizations. Um, this is something that I don't know that we've had the department before uh, direct us as to which uh, vendorization documents we're planning on using, but that is something that is certainly their prerogative, and it does uh, a big issue yesterday um, at hearing vendor at one regional center with 10 documents that I have to sign. Um, so part of that, and just to explain for service providers, is um, some regional centers have had certain experiences, and due to that, um, they're in order to get insured. Um, you know, their advice from their attorneys is to put uh, additional documentation in their file for information in their contracts. Hey, John, is anybody else losing yes, him on the microphone? 
Yeah, every you're you're cutting in and out a little bit. Are you? Can you hear me, John? Maybe you cut out altogether. Uh oh. Okay. Well, uh, this is gonna this is gonna be like the best ever when we <laughs> upload this to YouTube. John, we can hear you so, now. John, yeah, I'm that's sorry. Right. I got kicked out. I can share DDS's website if you still need me to. Yeah, just real quickly, if you could show DDS's website and go to the directives up down at the bottom, and we can just show the oh, and look at that, Heidi. Look at this team effort. Heidi even dropped it into the chat for us. Thank you very much, Heidi. So navigating from DDS's uh, homepage, scrolling to directives to regional centers. So right there under quick links and inside of there, you'll see the one from March 20th, which talks about self-determination program and then it has a vendor packet. So again, um, part of this is transparency and talking about, you know, uh, putting very clear expectations out there about what documents are needed. But one of the things they added though, is that if we do want to add a document, we need to get that approved by the Department of Developmental Services. So just wanted to um, share this and uh, Michelle, you can stop sharing your screen um, because the reason why I brought it up is that you know we're also looking at this statewide um, as well. So, you know, as far as uh, all the regional centers trying to um, look at standardizing the uh, vendorizations. I'm very proud of you know the stuff that we've done. We've been able to at least get a good list together of what's needed for all the different uh, service codes and vendorizations. And we'll be looking forward to sharing that with everyone uh, soon. I think due to the fact that we're having continued connectivity issues, um, and if you really wanna take a look at ARCA's positions on uh, for Grassroots Day, um, you can do that by checking out ARCA's website, the Association of Regional Center Agencies. So we're gonna start this uh, DSP collaborative event uh, kickoff. Let me ask real quickly, um, from case management, do you guys have anything additional uh, to share? I got a good update from uh, clinical. Anything from case management? I know we did send out a message to residential providers about the one to three um, supplemental staffing. We put out the activity worksheet. We want to make sure that service residential service providers are filling those out if they are wanting those one to threes. But we need to see activities that are going on that are above and beyond what you are already required to do. So please look at that message if you are a residential provider. And am I still cutting out a little bit? Can I get a thumbs up if I'm cutting out still? All yeah. right. Well, in that case, it is 1141 and I think we'll probably call the meeting for today. Next Friday, we have a holiday and so we will not be having coffee with community services. Would we send future forum dates to Herman? Yes, that is, that is a great way to do that, yes. All right, so I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. If you are coming down to Valley Mountain Regional Center for this event, which I know some of our Sacramento vendors were going to, I will see you shortly. Or whatever, so, all right, have a great day, folks. Take care.